everybody. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. I woke up today to beautiful snow on the ground for the first time this year. I don't know if it's snowing where you're at or maybe it's not even the right time of year depending on when you're checking this out. But uh, we are on study number 10 in our Search the Scripture study in 1 Samuel today. And we're covering 1 Samuel chapter number 12. And if you've been with us from the very beginning when we started this series, we are just a few short days away from being halfway through this three-year study. Let me see. In 19 days, we'll be halfway uh, through the Bible in our attempt in three years to every day study God's Word and answer a few questions on different sections in the Bible. And in three years, we'll be done with the whole Bible. 1 Samuel chapter number 12 is where we're at today. Study 10 in 1 Samuel. Three different questions here we're going to look at. First of all, as we read through this, we want to find out what was the point of uh, this farewell address here of Samuel. And unlike the Israelites, do we remind ourselves constantly of the greater things that God has done for us? And do we allow this reminder to have a full effect on our behavior. And then secondly, what were the outstanding features in Samuel's character that we can see in this chapter? And then finally, summarize the counsels and warnings of verses 20 through 25. And note especially what Samuel says about prayer. And if the people will not turn from their wicked ways, will prayer avail? Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 12 together. If you have a Bible, you can get that out and read it. If not, uh, you can look at the screen. 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. Samuel said to all Israel, I've listened to everything that you said to me, and I've set a king over you. Now you have a king as your leader. As for me, I am old and gray, and my sons are here with you. I have been your leader from my youth until this day, and here I stand. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Whose donkey have I taken? Whom have I cheated? Whom have I oppressed? From whose hand have I accepted a bribe to make me shut my eyes? If I have done any of these things, I will make it right. You have not cheated or oppressed us, they replied. You have not taken anything from anyone's hand. And Samuel said to them, The Lord is witness against you, and also his anointed is witness this day, that you have not found anything in my hand. He is witness, they said. Then Samuel said to the people, It is the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron and brought your ancestors up out of Egypt. Now then stand here, because I am going to confront you with evidence before the Lord as to all the righteous acts performed by the Lord for you and your ancestors. After Jacob entered Egypt, they cried to the Lord for help, and the Lord sent Moses and Aaron, who brought your ancestors out of Egypt and settled them in this land. But they forgot the Lord their God, so he sold them into the hand of Sisera, the commander of the army of Hazor, and into the hands of the Philistines and the king of Moab, who fought against them. And they cried out to the Lord, and they said, We've sinned, we've forsaken the Lord, and we've served the Baals and the Ashtoreths. But now deliver us from the hands of our enemies, and we will serve you. And then the Lord sent Jeroboam, Barak, Jephthah, and Samuel, and he delivered you from the hands of your enemies all around you, so that you lived in safety. But when you saw that Nahash, king of the Ammonites, was moving against you, you said to me, No, we want a king to rule over us even though the Lord your God was your king. Now here is the king that you have chosen, the one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king over you. If you fear the Lord and serve and obey him, and do not rebel against his commands, and if both you and the king who reigns over you follow the Lord your God, good. But if you do not obey the Lord, and if you rebel against his commands, his hand will be against you as it was against your ancestors. Now then, stand still and see this great thing that the Lord is about to do before your eyes. Is it not the wheat harvest now? I will call on the Lord to send thunder and rain, and you will realize what an evil thing you did in the eyes of the Lord when you asked for a king. 
Then Samuel called on the Lord, and that same day the Lord sent thunder and rain, so all the people stood in awe of the Lord and of Samuel. The people all said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants, so that we will not die. For we have added to all our other sins of asking for a king. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols, because they do you no good, nor can they rescue you, because they are useless. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will reject, will not reject his people, because the Lord has was pleased to make you his own. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you. And I will teach you the way that is good and right, but be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he's done for you. Yet if you persist in doing evil, both you and your king will perish. So what was the point of Samuel's farewell address here? And unlike the Israelites, do we remind ourselves constantly of the great things God has done for us and allow that reminder to have an effect on our behavior? Well, Samuel, in this address, principally in the uh, first part of this address, or the middle of this address, rather, he was attempting to remind Israel that God is always faithful. And unfortunately, Israel has consistently been disobedient in spite of God's incredible faithfulness. He's pointing out here the futility of their disobedience and the tremendous blessings that come from being an obedient person, an obedient people. If we would conduct this same exercise of remembering God's blessing and reminding ourselves of our disobedience and what happens. If we would conduct that same exercise more often in our lives, we'd probably be less prone to follow after our own desires. We'd remember where doing our own thing got us, and we'd probably be more apt to follow after him. Second question, what were the outstanding features in Samuel's character, as we can see in this chapter? Well, very simply, he was blameless. He took nothing from no one. He took no bribes. He was blameless, guiltless before the people. Third question, summarize the counsels and warnings of verses 20 through 25. And note especially what Samuel says about prayer. Yet if the people will not turn from their wicked ways, will prayer avail? Outside of obedience to the Lord, and oftentimes we only know how to be obedient by praying and finding out what would be the obedient thing to do. Outside of walking in obedience, there's really no hope for success for us. And the New Testament reminds us that when we don't know what we should do, that the Spirit himself intercedes for us. And we also need to remember that prayer, without repentance and without the sacrifice of obedience, is really a hopeless task. You can pray every day, you can, but if you don't get up from that prayer closet and obey what God told you in prayer, your prayer has been in vain. Hope you're having a great day today. I hope that uh, this study has been a blessing to you. God bless you and have a fantastic rest of your day.